Lesson 9.2c, Finding the Relationship Between Circumference and Area. In the last video, we saw that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. We can use what we know about circumference and area of circles to find a relationship between them. So the circumference is the measure around the edge of the circle. The radius is half of the circle going from the center to the edge, and the area is what fills up the inside. The circumference is 2 times pi times the radius as 2 pi r. An area is pi times the radius squared. We begin with a circle that has an unknown radius r. We solve the equation for the circumference of a circle for r. So the equation for the circumference of a circle, the formula is c is equal to 2 pi r. To solve for r means we need to isolate r to one side of the equal sign. We can isolate r by dividing both sides by 2 pi. We're going to get 2 pi over 2 pi, which is the same numerator and denominator, so that's a 1. We have 1 r on this side. It's isolated. And on this side, we have c divided by 2 pi. Now we substitute our expression for r into the formula for the area of a circle. We know that area is equal to pi r squared, and this r, not the squared one, just the r alone, is equal to the circumference divided by 2 pi. So instead of r in the area formula, we use c divided by 2 pi. Through the division property of equality, we found that the radius of a circle is equal to the circumference divided by 2 times pi. We will substitute the circumference divided by 2 pi in place of r into the formula for the area of a circle. So instead of a equals pi r squared, we're going to have a equals pi times the circumference divided by 2 pi squared. Now notice that I used parentheses. When an exponent is outside of the parentheses, that exponent affects everything inside. That means we have c to the second power, 2 to the second power, pi to the second power. If we didn't use parentheses, then this two exponent would only affect the c for circumference. We want it to affect everything, so we put it into parentheses with the exponent on the outside. So we changed the formula for the area of a circle from a is equal to pi r squared to a is equal to pi times the circumference divided by 2 pi squared. Now we square the term inside the parentheses. This means c to the second power, 2 to the second power, and pi to the second power. It means we've got c times c over 2 times 2 times pi times pi. We've got area is equal to pi times c squared divided by 2 squared times pi squared. We can multiply straight across. This is pi times what's inside the parentheses. We can put a 1 underneath the pi so we can multiply straight across. That means we get pi times c squared for the numerator and 1 times 2 squared times pi squared for the denominator. That's identity property, so we just have 2 squared times pi squared for the denominator. Then we evaluate the power. We've got area is equal to pi times the circumference squared divided by 4 times pi squared. See? 2 to the second power is 2 times 2. That's how we got that 4. Finally, we simplify. So we did 2 times 2 is 4, so we've got this here now. And this is pi times the circumference squared, and we've got 4 times pi times pi. Well, we can cancel out parts that make the same numerator and denominator as 1. We've got a 1 in the numerator, and we've got 1 in the denominator. So we can get rid of these as pi over pi, 
and that's going to leave us, which is a 1, that's going to leave us with the circumference squared divided by 4 pi. The circumference squared divided by 4 pi. Now, we solve for this circumference squared using the multiplication property of equality. So we want this c squared to be by itself on one side of the equal sign. We're solving for the c squared. So using the multiplication property of equality, we multiply by the reciprocal of this denominator. It's 4 pi, so we do 4 pi over 1. We flipped it around, and 4 pi over 1 on this side. And we're going to get 4 pi a over 1, so that's 4 pi a, and it's equal to c squared times 4 pi. And for the denominator, we're going to get 4 pi times 1, which is just 4 pi. And look, we've got the same numerator and denominator again, so this part of it makes a 1. So we have c squared on this side. Now we have 4 pi a for area is equal to c squared. Or we can flip it around and put the c squared on this side is equal to 4 pi a. So now this is the formula we have. The circumference squared is equal to 4 pi times the area. It's the circumference of the circle squared is equal to 4 times pi times the area. This equation shows us a relationship between circumference and area. If given a radius of a circle, we can use the formula for the area of a circle and the formula for the area of circumference of a circle to prove the circumference squared is equal to 4 times pi times the area and that it relates area and circumference. So, well, the formula, the circumference squared equals 4 times pi times the area work for a circle that has a radius of 5 centimeters? Well, we're going to plug 5 centimeters into the area formula. So, and we're going to use an approximation symbol for pi because we're not using all the digits of pi r. We're only approximating as 3.14. So we've got the area is approximately 3.14 times 5 squared and 5 squared is 5 times 5, that's 25. We multiply 3.14 times 25, and we get 78 and 5 tenths. We don't need this zero, do we? We have 78 and 5 tenths centimeters squared for our area of our circle. Now, we plug the 5 centimeters into the circumference formula. The circumference formula is, the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. So we've got 2 times 3.14, again we have the approximation symbol because we're using 3.14, times 5. And 2 times 3.14 is 6.28, we multiply that by 5, and we get 31 and 4 tenths centimeters. So we don't need that zero. We could, but we get the circumference is approximately 31 and 4 tenths centimeters. Now, here is that formula that we worked on through the whole video. And we found our area for the circle. We found our circumference for the circle. So we had circumference squared is equal to 4 times pi times the area. So our area is 78.5. Let's put that in place of the A for area. We do 4 times 3.14, and we get 12.56. We multiply that by 78.5, and we get 985 and 96 hundredths. From this formula, by plugging in the 78.5 for the area. Now, it says circumference squared. And we found the circumference was 31.4. Well, circumference squared means 31.4 times 31.4. We get 985 and 96 hundredths, just like we did here. It worked. We saw the relationship between the circumference and the area, and it worked with this formula.
we're finished with 9.2 and we're going to be moving on to 9.3, which is about area of composite figures. We're going to be exploring areas of composite figures in 9.3a. Be cautious when you're working with your numbers. Make sure that you know if it says r squared that you need to do radius times radius. Make sure you're not confusing the radius and the diameter. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and please join me for 9.3. Bye.